Hey there, comic friends. I'm Travis. And I'm Ethan. And this is... Monster Comic Review. That's right. This is books for... Superhero books for the week of April 1st. We would have thought this through. We would have had lots of jokes all the way through it. Yeah. Or spoofed the entire thing. Yes. Because we're just that witty. Yes. Okay. So witty. So, so witty that we'll talk about it in the non Right. right. That's right. Because we're a hipster. Yes. Not just witty. We're yeah. a hipster. Okay. We, we would have done that, but that would have been... We already did that. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so, anyway, uh, Batman Annual, uh, Batman and Robin Annual number three. Uh, Technically the end of the Batman and Robin stuff, even though the end of the Batman and Robin stuff was in issue 40, which came out the week before this, right? Mm-hmm. What do you think? Uh, not as good as Batman and Robin, but I still liked it. So what made it not as good as Batman and Robin? Well, right it just doesn't have everything but Batman and Robin. First of all, I didn't like the art as much. The art looked weird. It's like, not Gleason. Especially... Titus, the dog, the dog looked weird. Like, I don't care about the dog. I, or the, or the cat, <laughs> or the cat, well, or the cow. I'm done. Oh. I'm, it's over. The <laughs> friendship mold. Um, no. Uh, I, yeah, no. I thought the animals were cute, but um, even though they were weirdly drawn, uh, the story was fine. Um, I always like it when Alfred gets sassy, like, ever since, like, Batman the Animated Series, and, like, you know, and so, I just like that, that, basically, all of Alfred's responses to Damien are the same as Bruce, but right. I like it because Bruce and Damien are still very clearly, even though they're similar, they're still very clearly different. Mm -hmm. I just appreciate that because it's, like, a good way of showing them as their own people, but still showing the relation that, that even though, you know, Bruce responds with, like, the, oh, and the justice answers, you know, right, and right. Alfred makes a joke about chocolate, you know, ice cream, and Damien responds with the punky, you know, 11-year-old answers, and mm -hmm. Alfred still makes the joke about chocolate. I, I you know, it's, uh, that was cool. Um, and it was cool seeing, uh... Batman and Robin fight weird space stuff. So. Yeah, and then go to the moon and run around. Was kind yeah, of fun. that was fun. That was fun. Um, I like the very ending. Yes, I like the very, very end. The very, mm. very end was great with the, you know, what do you see? Endless opportunities. I see pearls. Yeah, so, so they ask what they see, and, and Damien's like, you know, I mean, I see the moon we were just on. That's pretty awesome. And I see this endless possibilities and all this stuff, and Batman says, I see pearls, which is perfect because the first issue, issue number one of Batman and Robin, the New 52, first started out, they have this whole thing about the pearls, the pearls raining down through the gutter and whatnot. So that part was perfect. The rest of it was, you know, who cares? Um, I mean, not who cares. I mean, it was fine. It was mm -hmm. fun, but nothing significant. Um, and I've talked to some other people about this, and I agree with them that that um, it would have been better if this came out before issue 40. And so issue 40 really would have been the final, the final yes. Batman and Robin we would get of this creative team would have been that. So that would have been the end. Mm -hmm. That would have been the end all. Whereas this being kind of the end all isn't as strong. Right. Yes. Other, than, other than that very last page. The very last page is poignant. Yeah? Yeah. Anything else to say about Not really. Okay. I give it a three. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, let's figure uh, it out. Um, I, yeah, I would give it a three, too. It was nothing exceptional, but it wasn't bad either. Uh, next up is Convergence Issue Zero. So this is I the only remember these. This is the only Convergent book that I'm going to get, because I'm not getting Convergence. I already signed that, but I had ordered this before, before I had made the decision. I'm not... I'm not going to get this. You have to open up to look at it. Uh, yeah, well, there's like one specific thing that I want to talk about. Okay. Just... So, um, so yeah, this is the zero issue. It's the pre-convergence convergence. I guess it's supposed to help you set up the story, which I don't know why they don't just do that in issue one instead of making a zero issue. Really, this is a Superman comic. Yes. Um, and it's a Superman comic that references crap that if you haven't been reading Superman, you have no freaking idea what he's talking about. Oh, no, I'm going to catch the doom, the doom disease or whatever. What the hell is that? So, I so don't becoming, know. becoming um, I just did. what's he called? The Doom, right? That's what he called, yeah, isn't yeah. he? Yeah. So to be, that that's a contagion now. Since when? Yeah. So you know, I don't, what, you know, what, what, whatever. Um, we get a little multiverse flavor in this thing. You know, it teases the kind of oh, these worlds are gonna fight. Um, in the whole the whole Brainiac thing, uh, completely needless really, I would assume, to read the rest of it. Um, a hefty book, it, I think it was like five bucks, I think is what, is what the price tag got, yeah. $4.99. Um, you know, I didn't pay that, but still. Uh, the art is nice. I like the art. The art's good. Van yeah. Shiver does a good job of superhero art. Um, but, no, I don't care. I just, I don't know. I mean, the only part about this book that I really liked was 
the spread with all the dead Superman. All the different Superman. Like, like I don't know. I like I like. And they all paid the price. Yeah, and the the Magog and the Lex Luthor and back here with Batman standing over his body. I mean, not gonna lie, not yeah. not gonna lie. That was kind of like yeah, but um. Uh, right. You know, I like seeing all the different Superman. I also like the Magog with all the husks of dead Superman. But yeah. Right. You know, it, uh, yeah. I, I mean, there was, I mean, yeah. There yeah. was no point in this thing other than, if, hey, you're a Superman fan, I guess. Yeah. And, and it was just a lot of him sitting around and la, 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 Although la. this is the most I've ever seen Brainiac in, like, physical form. Like, giant space Brainiac. Mm, yeah. Like, usually you just see his head. Right. So. But, Yeah. It was, you know, art was fine, but otherwise, I don't care. Even if I did care about Convergence, I don't think it was worth the money that we paid for it. I mean, it's 30-some pages, so, I mean, your page per price is fine, but there's no point in, the, in, in this issue. It doesn't even really 100% set up what's going on. It just gives you some background as to this is a living planet, and this living planet's going to force all these different little cities to fight each other, supposedly. Mm. Yeah. Um, I give it a two. Yeah. I mean, it's all art. I mean, I just don't care yeah. about the story. You know, and it's not that it was poorly written. It just, who cares? Yeah. Anyway, something like that. Um, Uncanny Avengers, issue number three. Written by Recommender, art by um, Dan... Daniel Kuna, is that it? <laughs> Kuna? I have no idea. Focus, focus. There you go. Anyway. So Jake, uh, sure. I mean, I liked it. I don't really, I didn't really remember the last issue at first. I almost thought that I didn't read issue two. Mm. I was really confused, especially with it, the way it starts out with like the weird robo sex between Vision. And oh right, because what's his daughter? Because we didn't really get a story of the Vision up until this point. Yeah. Vision's kind of been there. We know that he's looking for his ex-wife, Scarlet Witch, and so that's going to be some awkward stuff going on there. Yeah. yeah. And then right, we get all this kind of yeah, this all kind of like oh okay. Yeah, this this hot, just this, this hot, oh, yeah. this hot and heavy. Yeah, take that HBO. Uh, um, oh, Cinemax. Oh, Cinemax. Yeah, sorry, pick, pick okay. the right one. Okay. Um, yeah. No. Um, it was. I mean, I liked watching um, Quicksilver and Scarlet, which hang out. That was um, Guess fun. You, more of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I, just, I don't know. Maybe with all the flashes, I just have an inherent dislike to speedsters. Oh yeah. But. Um, I like watching Quicksilver get fun. Like when he's like, I'll speed along. Like he's I like, always oh, love yeah. it when speedy people are always like, oh yes, I'm such a speedster. And somebody's like, sure, wham. Right. So seeing her be like, yeah, okay, you done now. And then like beating him up. That was cool. Um, I have literally no idea what Scarlet Witch, Witch's powers are. Like I have no idea what specifically she's, she's a sorcerer. Yeah. Uh, so she literally just conjures up whatever she needs to have happen and makes it happen. Oh, okay. With a bunch of. Brightly colored. <laughs> right stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm like, I don't Currently know what colored. you do, but you're pretty cool. So yeah. that's that's cool. Um, it's well, cool. I think the interesting part of their story, of, of Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch's story, is them trying to figure out who they are because they've, they've been told that Magneto's not their dad. So suddenly finding out that who you thought your dad was all, this, you know, all these years suddenly isn't. So you're trying to figure out your origin, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and Scarlet Witch taking it even one step further in questioning on whether or not Quicksilver is even actually her brother at this point. And, 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 and who pones Quicksilver in this? A sister. She's supposedly related. I mean, she implies she's related. So, so the, um, whatever the main villain is in this, Superior Propagator, or whatever the heck is, the, the Progenator, or whatever the heck his name is. Sorry, Marvel fans. Um, He's far enough off in the French. I don't know who he. I don't. I mean, I, when I read yeah, him, I yeah. know he is, but I don't know who he is at the same time. Um, so c potentially created them all or whatever. But yeah, so she's just kind of, you know, easily poning him. You know, he's like, yeah. oh yeah, like you're saying. And so that part is all cool. And of course, you get this kind of underground rebel thing that's going on. They're, they're clearly you know, going to get closed. Even, yes, <laughs> I don't talk about it. Um, I don't know. I liked. I actually really liked the second issue. Like, I really liked the. Um, the sorry, I um back to the second issue. I liked I liked seeing, you know, all the people, right, when he's giving them the big speech about how basically they suck. Right, they're not. I don't know, I really liked I really liked that um, you know, he was finding problems with all this great you know, the whole the, you dare to not be born perfect, right? You know, the whole thing falling right. in love thing. I really liked the way that was done. I really liked the art in this book. Oh, the art that is amazing. Awesome. Yeah, that's and, that's a huge and so for this book. I always I don't know, like Maybe it's all the old samurai movies, but I always like watching 
you know, the even though it's done a lot, I like watching the, or in this case, reading the, you know, the gathering the the wimpy, yeah, yeah, the the wimpy, the wimpy um Villages. rebellion fighting the evil lord. Mm -hmm. I mean, especially this guy because as this cool, you know, sci-fi aspect to it. Right. It's just yeah. It's just cool. It's a cool book. I'm excited yeah. to see where it goes. Well, a lot of interesting characters. I yes. mean, not not that, you know, your Marvel knowledge is great when it comes to these characters. When I mean, it's, nope. you, you know, you can name them, and that's about as far as it goes yeah. to, to a large degree. So interesting to see exactly where that's all going to go. I'm curious to see. I, I haven't read lots of stuff of like Brother Voodoo in it, for instance. I'm curious to see how he, you know, he was in the whole spirit thing, how that's going to play out and whatnot. Exactly. They're also um, using characters that I know like nothing about, and so. I don't already have like an inherent dislike to them, right? So um, right. I haven't seen them being used stupidly other right. places, right? So I think they're all cool characters. I like the part in this story also with Rogue, where she's kind of cursing the fact that she's like, "Damn it, you know, if I was here with the X Men, if I was here with my friends, I know Wolverine would be smashing through the wall right about now to save me, or Kirk would be teleporting in to help me out." And she's basically, you know, one of the underlings is wanting to use a bunch of her, her, you know. DNA to create the next spec whatever and it's kind of torturing her in the process of that you know but instead of course she's stuck here with this makeshift group of Avenger friends that she's picked up and they're just kind of useless as far as she's yeah, concerned exactly. at she's this point like, ah. she's so done with them that and Rogue is one of my favorites Rogue yeah. is like one yeah. of the few mainstream Marvel characters that I really really like yeah. so yeah so anyway so I'm enjoying the book um the art I know you said yeah, the art, the art is, is so amazing oh. the art is is really it has its own look it's and it's gorgeous um and, um, which is interesting, you know, part of it's the coloring too, which I think the coloring is done by, is done by him, because the coloring is this kind of, well, it's just like the cover, it's, it's not bright colors, it's like, it's, I don't want to say it's pastels, because pastels is wrong, well, yeah, he does all of it, you know, so he does the coloring too, um, but it's just colored different, it's colored different than a lot of, of course it's so dark and you probably can't tell, it's just colored different than, your standard superhero book. You know what I mean? It doesn't have the same kind of eye-poppy, bright colors in it. Oh, uh, God bless Marvel for these stupid inserts that are a different size than the rest of them. Seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, like we didn't know Secret Wars was coming. Really? Uh, anyway, so, yeah, see, there's her power. She just swirls her hands around. Yep. Aren't you impressed? Ooh, Ooh. spooky. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I really enjoyed it. And I'm, I'm looking forward to the story. The one hiccup is, is I don't know when the next issue comes out. Oh, I just ordered books for June. But I ordered my, yeah, my June books. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the solicitation. Oh, okay. I haven't seen a solicitation past issue three. Uh, hopefully it survives. So I don't know if Secret, Secret Wars, Wars. It, hoses it down or why we're taking a break. I have no idea. So what do we rate this? Uh, I give it a four. I give it a four also. I'm, I'm digging it. It'd be cool. Uh, next up we have the Uncanny, um, yeah, Inhumans. the Uncanny Inhumans issue zero. Because we have to collect every Uncanny book there is. Yes, of course. <sighs> Except for Uncanny X-Men, we don't get which is the original Uncanny. Anyway, um, yeah, um, issue zero, un Uncanny Inhumans. I picked this up because I've, I've always have been intrigued by the Inhumans. I missed out on the other Inhuman book that's mostly uh, centers around Medusa and her kind of trying to regain the new Attila and the powers and whatnot. So I picked up this one because it's Black Bull. I've always liked the Black Bull character. I like his powers. I love his whole whispers and blow things up. All that kind of stuff. Um, art in this is really super strong again. Uh, McNiven is is an excellent artist, I think. And and you, and you have to be because clearly you have to tell a story, a large portion of the story, without him having dialogue. Yes. Right? Because mm -hmm. he literally makes a sound and it is. Destroy stuff. Right. I'd like to start though, like the only the, like the biggest problem I hate this cover. Like I know you hate like floating heads. Mm -hmm. I despise covers where the protagonist is looking beat up or like smashed or just it drives yeah. me crazy. Well he does take an arrow. Well a single arrow And not to the knee. Yeah. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> I guess he can still adventure. Lucky That's him. That's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. No. But yeah, I get that it. That was badass. But no, I just hate hate covers like that. Speaking of him taking arrow though, that was that was pretty great. Takes the arrow right, just looks really annoyed, and pulls it out, breaks it off, well, pulls it out right. Because he and can't yeah, the, he can't actually go out or anything. Yeah, he's you just know? like he's just like. Uh, and I like the the guy who's shooting. I got. I think I got him. You didn't get him enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I I'd say so. Uh, right. Seeing as he like messes them up. Yeah. Oh, look, Dad. Okay, but why the hell? Okay, though he, they they just shot him with an arrow. I get that he's a single guy, but still, he's a single guy that just came from nowhere. I wouldn't. They be shooting shot a volley arrow. of arrows. Just one arrow happened to hit him. 
Oh. And they're also beating in with the World War II guns. I mean, exactly. it's other Why armaments. did they shoot them with the World War II guns? I think the arrow was probably faster. Oh. You can aim it faster and you can aim with a cannon, right? Mm -hmm. At a single individual. Yeah. So, I think it's probably what that is. Plus, it looked cool. Yes. I suppose so. <laughs> um, but, so, he's basically... He's got some red spot that glows on his hand that I didn't know about that basically signs the end, the end times, basically. Uh, so he wants to meet, he wants to um, find his son. He gets a bunch of, you know, you're a crappy husband, you're a crappy father from um, Medusa. But Medusa still allows him to kind of hunt down where his son's at. Son's being raised by um, Kang, um, which is interesting. Um, he does get a brief dialogue with his son because he breaks open the Terrigan gas and while in that fugue state or whatever, he can, you know, they can communicate. Um, and his son is, of course, going to go, goes cocoon because he's going to erupt with whatever powers. And then he basically strikes a deal with Kang to send his son back in time so he won't be so close to the end of time as the end of time is coming up. And is I don't that know. the other pod that he would up with? The or do pod very the, end. Or do all the pods just look the same? The pods all look the same. Oh, okay, cool. Except for the yes. one that was white because it's dead. It didn't. It didn't take right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. So all the pods the... look like big giant green and why is, caterpillars. And there's there's two here. Like what's oh at the beginning? Well, what's happened? What you don't know is in the Marvel universe, um, um, the gas has been released all over the place. The Terrigan gas. The humans have decided. You know, look, we look. We need to bolster our 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 members. So the Terrigan gas gets released on the entire oh, world. Oh, okay. See. All the Inhumans are walking around, just like you and me. Mm -hmm. And you, you may be living a normal life, but you've got this extra whatever special DNA thing that actually makes you an Inhuman. You get hit with the gas, you become like Ms. Marvel. Mm -hmm. Your powers suddenly pop up and whatnot. So that's, that's what was going on at the beginning of it. Okay. And he basically harvests, mm -hmm. he harvests some of that Terrigan gas that was floating around because he needs it so he can go and set his son up with power before the end of time thing. And I'm assuming that end of time stream that Kang is showing him it's probably the Secret Wars event that's coming. That makes a certain amount of sense, mm -hmm. right? So that's all kind of cool. And he strikes, of course, this interesting deal with Kang that Kang's willing to do this for him, but he has to give up all claim on his son. Kang, the, the, his son will basically officially be Kang's kid from that point forward. So that's interesting. I'm not sure what the motivation for Kang is. He's just screwing with, with Black Bolt or does, does he, he actually like the Black kid? Black Bolt's kid, yeah. Right. Um, the, the weird thing is, is there's no more other issues of... Uncanny and humans. This is a zero issue, and there's no solicitations. Okay. Up through June. So I don't know what they were thinking to God, do this. Why they put this? Secret I don't. Secret Wars. Why? Why they did this and why they put it out the way they did? I have no idea. Um, comics to comics. Uh, embarrassed himself. He was on Twitter and he asked Charles Soule. He goes, "Hey, you know, um, you know, when is the next Uncanny and Humans coming out? You know, because we got." And, I, and he goes, "And I love Zero Year." And Charles Soule replied back, hey, thanks. And didn't answer the question at all. So I don't know. We don't know. So that's the only, my only complaint with the book. I really enjoyed it. it looks awesome. Um, it doesn't exist. Excited to see what the characters are. You know, curious about the whole thing, even though it clearly, it, to me, shows it's this, it's a Secret Wars kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. But if they were going to keep putting the comic out, even if it was tied in Secret Wars, I'd probably keep picking it up. For now, anyway. But... If it's got Uncanny in the name, it's just gonna come out at uncanny times, I guess. Yeah, oh wow. Oh, I know. Anyway, so what we rate this? Uh, I'd give it a four. Yeah, I'd give it a week four. Tentatively, a tentative yeah, four. Yeah, I mean, the art's awesome. Yes, and like yes, I said, yes. it was a good story, it really was. Mm -hmm. It was really jumbo. I mean, I'd be excited to read the next episode, the next issue, but like I said, who knows when that's gonna be. So, you didn't read the other three books that... No, that I'm because I have standards. Yeah, I'm gonna briefly talk about, and I have none. If I paid for it, I'm reading it. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, a lot of these are like... I, if I refuse, if I don't, it's like the quantum physics, right? If I don't look at them, then they don't exist yet. Oh, but mm -hmm. they do. So, no, they do. Um, Superman Wonder Woman issue number 17. Um, last issue going into um, Convergence. Um, it was okay. It basically finished up the storyline with Magog. Um, ends on a note of, because one of Magog's issues was, is, you know, the, just the common folk are really unforgettable. And you don't really care about that. You just want to be these big fights. You're not really fighting to save people. You're just fighting because you're big, muscled people that can fight. So at the end of this, Wonder Woman is basically documenting all the just the regular Joes as much as she can. She's basically taking on the role of a reporter, just like Clark. Mm -hmm. Yeah, whatever. And I don't plan on picking this up, going out the other side of Convergence. I was kind of hoping that Tomasi would do something special with it. 
granted, I probably caught the tail end of this arc, which is more about the combat than it has to do with their relationship, but he seemed to squeeze in Batman and Robin's relationship in regardless of what was going on, right? So I wanted him to kind of do the same thing with this. If you're gonna, if you're gonna tease these two people as being a couple, write me something that shows why I would be interested in that, and, and that didn't happen here. So, and I know people will comment down below, you should read the Charles Soule run of it. It was great before the Doomsday stuff came up, but whatever. I doubt I will go back and do that. Yeah. Um, a horrific end to what was one time a great comic book and turned into a horrific comic book, Batwoman uh, Annual Number 2. Finally finishes out the story of Batwoman in space. And um, it was... It, it had... Yeah. It had four... Um, this this issue had four pencilers and five oh, inkers. Oh, man. Uh, the only consistency in the art was the coloring. Um, but, yeah, it was... Um, it was... Um, not good. Uh, anyway, it was so phoned in, it was kind of ridiculous and unfortunate. But I got it because I knew I was so close to the end of it, might as well have the full run, is why I purchased it. And, um, and of course, I was crazy enough to actually finish reading it just to ensure I knew well, how this wonderful story ended. So hopefully we see uh, Batwoman at some point uh, coming out the other side of Convergence somewhere. Less with, terrible. With, with cool people actually excited to, to do her and do some just that. And finally, the 52-week um, year-long um, uh, Batman Eternal weekly comic, issue number 52, all ends right here. And um, you know what? Actually, it was a decent ending. Oh, good. Despite I mean, all the bitches and complaints I have with it, it had a decent ending to it. Uh, you know, the... The good guys win, clearly. Um, the bad guys kind of lose, but kind of get away and get real justice administered to them in it, which I'll tell you about off camera if you're curious. Okay. Um, which, was, which, was, which was cool. Um, I did like that. So it did end on a, a good note. Um, I may do a video just on Batman Eternal and my opinion on the whole thing. Because the bill of goods that I was sold at the beginning of Batman Eternal, what it was supposed to be about... There are a lot of places they dropped the ball on as far as they introduced some new characters, but they didn't really do anything with those characters. They, they didn't develop them. They didn't enrich the world of Gotham at all. Um, I, don't even, I don't even understand how Gotham itself, other than briefly in this issue, Gotham itself changes in any way um, that's any different than Gotham has always been. And part of one of the things that was billed was is that this was going to change Gotham, change the, the makeup of Gotham and make it closer to what Scott Snyder wanted for his you know, the rest of his Batman run or whatever, and I don't see how it, it did that. There's a brief moment in here where basically everybody takes up arms to become Batman. I mean, they don't dress as Batman, but clearly Batman's over his head with all the stuff that's coming at him, and a message gets sent out, gets sent out, bat signals get sent out everywhere, and basically say, look, you know, Batman's done all this work for us, now it's time for all of us to step up and be as much Batman as we can. So people, instead of running to save themselves, help other people out of burning buildings and that sort of stuff. So, so... You know, the whole city comes together, but mm. but it's done that before. That's not anything yeah. particularly new as far as that goes. So anyway, so lots of beefs as far as that, the whole spoiler stuff and whatnot. The, there was a moment in this book early on where Stephanie Brown you know, says that one of the bad guys is Bruce Wayne, and I can never figure out what that is. Well, there's a villain in here that ends up explaining how Bruce Wayne, why they would, why they would mistake Bruce Wayne as being one of the bad guys. So that was cool. Um, but had a decent ending. It was a happy, you know, kind of yay ending. Uh, the biggest curiosity is, is Commissioner Gordon is still not Commissioner Gordon. Oh. Maggie Sawyer is Commissioner. That's right, that's right, I remember. Maggie Sawyer gets made Commissioner. He's out. He, you know, he's still part of the police force if he wants to be, but he's no longer Commissioner. And he's fine with that right now. So, I don't know. What does that mean? I mean, for me, Gordon is a significant part of the Batman mythos. He's as much, he's as significant as Alfred is just about, really. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. So, you know, what's his role? That, this makes me even more suspicious that he's going to be the Batman with the rabbit ears in the, in the robot suit. That will actually be Gordon inside there. He's an old man. Wait, he would, what? He would need a, what? Oh, that? wait, wait, wait until oh. coverage is over. Wait until June. Oh, June's going to be fun. You, I think you and I so far have different definitions of fun. <laughs> anyway, so that's it. That's it for our superheroes. For April Fools. Yay. Who's the fools? I don't know. Anyway. You, you bought those last time. I know, years. I bought them all. Jeez, what's up with that? And I read them. I didn't just buy them. I, know. I didn't just look at the pretty covers. I actually looked what was on the other side. Much to my chagrin in some Maybe cases. This comic won't suck. April Fools, oh. it still sucks. That's right. That's right. Anyway, so that's it. Um, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.